Yo, what's poppin'? Welcome back to Broman Brapsody. This is where we review cars and motorcycles. I'm the host for motorcycles and the punk does the cars. I'm back here at Indian Motorcycle Greensboro with my man Isa. Isa, how you doing, man? Hey, man, I'm doing fabulous. How about y'all? Awesome, awesome. What do we have here today, Isa? Today we have the 2021 Indian Springfield motorcycle. Yes, and in today's episode, we are gonna talk about this bike, see some of its cool features. I'm gonna take it out on the road, share my thoughts with you guys talk about the cost of ownership and assign it a broman score and before we do all of that though if you're new to broman give us a like and a subscribe we'd really appreciate it we turn out content every week and your support would mean a lot so don't go anywhere it's me it's your boy bro and I am your broman <laughs> Isa, so talk to us about this beautiful machine. This, uh, this is one of my favorite bikes. I love this bike. To me, this bike is like the roadmaster of the uh, no fairing bikes. Uh, it's got everything on it. You got front and rear highway bars. You got passenger floorboards instead of pegs. You got a windshield, driving lights on it already. Um, it's got the 111 stroke engine in it. You got the classic style uh, hard bags, which is I really love. And this bike is just a beautiful bike. It's a two-tone uh, finish, dirt track tan, thunder black gloss paint. It's got the full fender skirt, which is I love. Uh, it's just an awesome bike. The one, uh, 111 V-stroke engine, it's around uh, between 17 and 1800 cc engine. It's got some, it's got the power, it's got the pick up and go. It's just an awesome bike. Yeah, and uh, this is a beautiful, gorgeous looking bike. It has this big headlamp and there's so much chrome on it, all over it. And this is one of their uh, more of a vintage, a throwback, uh, throwback motorcycle. So much so that even the name Springfield, uh, so like Indian, Indian motorcycle is owned by Polaris Industries now. Uh, and, but back in the day when Indian started off, Indian was, it was headquartered and built in a town called Springfield, Massachusetts from 1901 to 1953. And this model is paying homage to those days and therefore it's called the Indian Springfield. This is just a beautiful bike. I mean, this is what a classic uh, Indian motorcycle looks like. Uh, just get on and go. You got the really cushioned seat with the studs all around it to give you give you that vintage style and that vintage look. You got uh, uh, your locking, uh, saddlebags. locking sa automatic saddlebag locked right here. It's like your saddlebags, your central locking of your saddlebags. I have it on my Roadmaster, and that's such a cool feature. Like you, at a press of a button, it locks everything. You don't have to individually lock or unlock them. And hard saddlebags are. are I love the hard saddle bag. <laughs> I do too. I, I think it's a beautiful look. Um, it's a little, it's a modern look to a, a vintage style bike. Really, this thing, this bike just screams, look at me. It just, it, it demands attention. Yeah. Uh, Mom, Mama and Isa went a little poetic there. You know, it's a modern take on a classic bike. I love it, man. It's gorgeous. That brings out the poet in him. That's how beautiful this bike is. <laughs> uh, you can't go wrong with this bike. I mean, you know, uh, you, you want a bike to ride, whether it's just around town or it's state to state, going to see friends, this is a bike for you. Yeah, and this is great for s solo riders and for riders who want to go two up riding. Yes, yes. And yes. I'm assuming you can have, you can add a few more accessories to it if you wanted to. Definitely, like you, you can do sissy bar. Yeah, heated grips. Uh, you can even change out the seat if you wanted to to like uh, either heated seats or heated and cool seats. I mean, it's, it's the options are endless on this bike like the seat, saddlebags, backrests. You can even have a rider backrest in addition to a passenger backrest. Uh, heated grips, different kinds of grips, different kinds of windshields. Uh, LED, you could, you could change these to LED pathfinder lights uh, for your headlamps and Definitely. stuff. Definitely, you can, you can do a lot with this bike um, and you can dress it up to make it your own, you personalize it. 
personalize it to make it your own. If you want to throw leather wraps onto it, uh, leather floorboard floorboard wraps with tassels and everything. I mean, you can really make it look yeah. great. So you can make it however you want it to. Like, I know Isa loves bikes that are fast and crazy because he's, he's a crazy guy. <laughs> Not as crazy as you, but yeah. thank you. So what's the starting point for the price of this bike? If I'm correct, I think the starting point is at maybe 22000 but that's that's uh, for a bike like this, that's a really great price. Really, you're getting a, uh, a lot of bike for your money. Uh, you really can't beat this bike. It's um, For those of you who, who are not really crazy about bikes with fairings, this will be the perfect bike for you. Yeah. I, I definitely believe that. Um, yeah, and like for that money, you get a ton of standard features a lot of ton of standard stuff on this bike that you don't have to put on uh, that you don't have to add on later on like i know on my roadmaster when i got my roadmaster it didn't have driving lights and a lot of those things that i had to go back and, and add and right. put on right. and that kind of adds up but on this bike everything's standard but you don't have a fairing so like he said like isa said if you're not into bikes with the whole fairings and stuff like that well this is a great fit for you yeah. Well, thank you, Isa. That's a lot of awesome information. Now, can you tell us a little bit about Indian Motorcycle Greensboro? Indian Motorcycle is a family-owned business, which is a good thing for our customers because we treat everybody like family. We, we try to give you the best uh, customer service, the best sell point price on the bikes, and uh, we try and get to know our customers, which will make it that much more easier to uh, sell you the bike. And the staff here is very knowledgeable, they're very friendly, and they're very helpful. You've seen, we've seen Monty in, our, in my videos, we've seen Isa in my videos, we've seen Morgan in my videos, and then there's Bob, the sales manager, uh, we can never get him on the videos because he's always so busy. but. All of the folks here are really amazing. They really treat you like family, like one of their own. And they love repeat customers. I've been coming to them again and again, and they've been nothing but awesome to me. I'll put their website link in the video description below. Come down here and check them out. And if you come down here, just tell them that the Broman sent you. Oh, thank you, Isa. This was a lot of good information. This is a beautiful bike. Uh, thank you for your time. Oh, thank you. Thank you for coming Speaking in. Speaking of time, do you know what time it is? It's right o'clock. Yes, sir. Right o'clock. Let's go. It has the beautiful Indian headrest logo here. This lights up when you start her up. And underneath the valance fender, you have these really beautiful contrast cut wheels. And you have dual discs up front that provide you with the stopping power. Uh, this has a 25 degree rake angle. What's the rake angle, you ask? Well, draw us perpendicular from the steering mount and follow the fork tube. That angle is the rake angle. Shorter the rake angle, the more nimble the bike is, and larger the rake angle, the more stable it is at highway speeds, higher speeds, and such. Check out the rest of the bike, man. Same two-tone color, lots of chrome down there, lots of chrome. And you get highway crash bars for the front and the rear. And the rear ones actually help protect the saddlebags. These seats are nice, wide, and comfy. These are studded seats, really cool. Then you have your saddlebags, open the saddlebags, press on the button on top and pull it up. Large, deep, spacious saddlebags. Cool. And on your right saddlebag, you also have a 12 volt power outlet down here. So you can plug in your heated gear, phone charger, whatever. She's pretty from the back as well. You have the dual exhaust coming out one on each side. You have your tail light and the two turn signals. Six speed transmission, 111 thunderstroke. This puts out about 119 foot-pound of torque. You get two fuel caps. This is not functional. This is just for symmetry. This is the functional one on your right. Uh, up here, you have your fuel gauge. And you see that little yellow background to that? That's the classic look, the classic look of Indian motorcycles. So you have the little yellow background there. And this is your trickle charger. This is the point for a trickle charger. You can add your heated grips, uh, heated gear here, or add the trickle charger, up to you. This is your analog speedometer. You have this little section here that shows you information, and you have, light, and you have lights here for high beams, error messages, left turn signal, ABS, neutral, tire pressure, right turn signal, check engine, and kickstand. Underneath that, you have the central locking of your saddlebags, and you have a blank switch here. That's where your the controls for heated grips would go. 
This does not come standard with heated grips, but you can add them. Moving on to the handlebars, these have the beautiful teardrop Indian mirrors. I love them. As for your buttons, you have your horn, high beams, passing lights, turn signals, and if you press that down, that's your hazard. We have a trigger on top here. On the right side, same thing, the beautiful teardrop Indian mirror. We have a trigger on top, power button, kill switch, and start stop. And then here is your cruise control. All right, so let's talk about this little screen here, this little section. Uh, this is where you get a lot of your options and stuff, such, your menu options. And to access those, you have to pull the trigger on your left hand side. This is what you get as your default. It tells you which gear you're on and your odometer and the time. And you also get this digital fuel gauge. Pull it once, pull the left trigger once. This goes to your trip meter one. Again, trip two, this is your uh, diesel tachometer. We are in neutral and stop, so it's N and zero. This is your voltmeter, outside temperature, your fuel economy, and fuel range. Now this bike also comes with uh, the rear cylinder deactivation and the riding modes. To access those, you have to use the trigger on your right. See, so when, you when you tap the right trigger once, the first you get are the tire pressure, uh, so front and rear. Then you get into the riding modes, press and hold it, hold the right trigger, you'll get into the riding modes. Then you tap the right button again, it goes from standard to tour. Again, it goes to sport. Now press and hold it. And you go back to that screen, tap that button again, you get into CN cylinder deactivation. Press and hold the right trigger, enter there, tap it once, you can turn it back on and off. If you're new to Broman, hit that subscribe button. It helps us stay motivated as we put out new content every week. <laughs> Let's begin our ride with a with making a couple of U-turns to see how this thing maneuvers. Huh. U-turn again. And boom. <laughs> the balance is awesome on this bike. Which means it's time to do our second test. The pull test, I already have it in sport mode. So let's go. <laughs> yep, the Thunderstroke 111 with the 119 foot pound of torque does not disappoint. It's not super fast or super quick, agile, um, or super fast and quick, not agile, it's pretty agile, but it has a nice peppiness to it, very nice peppiness. First impressions of the bike, I love this freaking seat, the seat is so comfortable, you guys. These handlebars are all pulled back towards me, so the riding position is very comfortable. I have this big windshield in front of me. I don't have a fairing. That is blocking a lot of the wind. It's really awesome. I'm 5'10", 31 inch inseam, and I can flat foot this puppy very easily. And this goes to speak volumes about the design of this bike. Uh, when you're stopped at a red light or a stop light or whatever, it stays upright, it doesn't feel heavy. It feels like it's very well balanced and it wants to stay upright. It doesn't want to go one way or the other, which is very cool. And riding this and speaking of the balance, just check out, check this out. You can do this all day. This is awesome. <laughs> I'm a big fan of, I'm a fan of all Indian motorcycles and this is no, uh, exception to it this is cool <laughs> um, this has a stock exhaust on it and it, it's not a loud exhaust but it's quite throaty all right let's make this turn and see if lean 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 no problemo this car doesn't know how to drive um, but yeah, this riding position, the seat, the riding position, the riding ergonomics, it's amazing. And the balance is so awesome. 
give it some gas and it'll go. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Alrighty, see you. This is a cool bike, man. I love this chrome. Uh, oh, I love this chrome with the paint scheme, the contrast. I'm just digging this, man. I'm digging, digging, digging this. Now, today it's a nice overcast day. It's not too hot. Um, uh, but we are in July, so it'll get hot soon uh, and the wind that I'm getting from the sides and the arms upper body legs it's it's very nice it's cooling uh, so yeah and this bike has a air-cooled 111 which is an 1800 some cc engine uh, with the cylinder deactivation it, it cuts down the rear cylinders when you're stopped in traffic or at a red light or something like that so it helps with the heat uh, but even with my Roadmaster, I don't see a lot, I don't face a lot of heat issues and I ride my bike a lot. So I'm assuming it will be the same with this. Let's check out the brakes, front brakes only. Okay. Nice. They have a nice bite. Is this a good commuter bike? Uh, yeah. This, this is. This has hard saddlebags, you have the, you have the big, big windshield. You can use this for commuting. This has a 58 inch wheelbase and it's easy to maneuver it around. Check this out. Um, although this is a big touring bike, big tourer, uh, it feels very light, very well balanced. So yeah, you can use it for uh, daily commuting. Absolutely you could. Now, is this a good bike for beginners? Well, <laughs> no, 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 no. This is an expensive bike, 22,000 and change. Uh, this is quite powerful, putting on 119 for pound of torque and all of that. Um, and this is a heavy bike. I think this is close to 800, if not north of 800 pounds. So when you combine those three things together, it's not a very good option for someone who is brand new to motorcycling. Not at all. This is a bike perfect for folks who want a touring bike or a bigger bike but they don't really care about the fairings and infotainment screen and all of that they want something that's minimalistic and something that looks vintage something that looks old school has a has a hint of nostalgia to it this, then this is the bike for them as for the performance and power upgrades since this has a 111 you can get a stage one kit a stage two kit and a stage three kit the stage 3 kit is basically a tuned 116 uh, so you get more um, horsepower and torque out of it um, so yeah you are covered <laughs> on the power band for your accessories there are a lot of accessories that you can choose from uh, right from Indian um, and uh, the aftermarket space has been catching up slowly but surely so you should be good there now if you want the 116 and uh, you want something that looks a little different, you could get the Springfield Dark Horse, which is the Dark Horse version of this particular bike. I reviewed it a few weeks ago. It's all blacked out with the 116 and it looks much more badass. It has an ape hanger, but it doesn't come standard with the windshield and all of that, all of those fun stuff. So depending upon what's your, what's your poison, you can pick and choose it. <laughs> Well, I am having a lot of fun with this bike and since I have some more time to spend with this bike So why don't y'all head back to the punk and wrap up this video. Well, thank you Meanie. Let's talk about the cost of ownership This bike requires a service every 5,000 miles and that service at your local Indian dealer should cost you about $260 Now assuming you ride 5,000 miles a year your cost of maintenance over a two-year time frame would be you would need two services that's 520 bucks and probably a set of new tires this bike has the Metzler Cruistex and they should last you about 10,000 miles a set of these tires front and back cost you about 500 bucks so a, a total cost over the two-year period is about 1020 divided by the number of days it's 1.4 dollars a day let's assign it a score shall we on the looks it's a 9 out of 10 on the brop it's an 8 out of 10 
on the maintenance it's an 8 out of 10 and on the comfort it's an 8 out of 10 for a combined romance score of 8.25 out of 10 thanks for watching i'll see you next week